There's a difference between someone who can shoot and a shooter. And part of this is how well you can dynamically make shots. In other words, being able to shoot with momentum in various directions, even through the shot like you see here. So this, for example, is a set shot. And this is a more dynamic shot. Now, if you're a taller, longer player with a high release and or have a play style where you're cool being a low volume three point shooter, you probably won't need as much of this. But if you want to become a higher volume three point shooter, make more shots and expand your possibilities, this is definitely something to focus on. Because for most, this wouldn't be a good shot or you may not even see the opportunity to shoot it just because you know you can't make it. But for a dynamic shooter, many times it's going to be three points. When you look at how most players train their shooting, it's often standstill, or maybe on the move, but at a lower speed where they slow down, take their time, and essentially make it a set shot, which isn't bad, but it doesn't prepare us for stuff like this. And look, I'm not even talking crazy fading into the shot clock shots. I'm just talking little drifts, hard plants from high speeds, rotations in the air, and stuff like this. So here are a few things to be working on in your shooting workouts. First is being able to manage lateral momentum very well, which we're working on here. They're trying to toss it out, get there super quickly, and then minimize the time from the catch into the release. This may be the one we see most in games, and if you can get really good at this, all of these shots become that much more possible. Adding in a contest is then big here to get you really going at a high speed, and also help get you used to shooting and finishing your shot comfortably, and not allowing the contest to rush you. Oh yeah, we also did this drill first before any warm up shots to get their feel and psychological momentum going, because part of being an adaptable shooter is being able to come in a bit cold and make shots. Something to do in some workouts. The second one is shooting with high forward momentum. This one can be tough because typically you'll have so much speed that it'll end up as more of a two motion shot or something where you gotta control that power. So sometimes shots will sail, you'll rush them, and will also end up being flat at times. But if you get good at this, these transition shots will become a lot easier, as well as ones where you get a quick burst of the ball and raise up quickly. Your trigger will speed up, and you'll just feel overall more athletic shooting the rock. So in this drill, they're going off the dribble, but primarily because it helps them go at a higher speed. I'm not exactly sure why, but I think it's because it's easier to time up and go 100% than timing up the catch. If you try it, you'll feel it. I know a transition pull up three is probably not a shot most of these guys will be shooting a crazy mountain game, but it's a great way to work on these qualities. Next is being able to shoot over the left and right shoulders. So running parallel to or even away from the rim and turning as you catch, take those final strides and even in the air, especially coming off screens or lifts, being able to shoot these is something that really only bona fide shooters can do, especially turning later in that process. But if you exaggerate this and get good at it, you can open up a lot more shots for yourself since you don't always have to be fully squared before catching the ball, which means you can sprint and create more space. Obviously, this takes body control and a ton of reps, but something to try out. Then is being able to shoot slightly out of rhythm. So a good rhythm would be catching right here, everything timed up into the shot. Of course, we want to get as many in rhythm shots as we can in a game. But that's for another video, because basketball isn't always clean cut and perfect, and there may be times where you pump fake and got to recreate rhythm into the shot where you get to a bit awkward of a foot position and have to reset and find rhythm. So this skip drill where they're exaggerating the height of the skip, the partner says go, and then they're shooting it as quickly as possible is a really good way to work on this. Because sometimes if they're pushing the speed like they should, they'll have to find the ground so quickly that it'll feel a bit awkward. Or the pickup timing will be weird. And this drill is also good for being able to shoot from different heights. For example, if you have to jump up a bit to catch the ball into the shot, maybe now you're gonna be able to hit the ground and pop right back up into that jumper. So just building the general quality of being able to go from a high center of mass or even off of the ground to a quick rebound off the floor into a shot, which again, is a lot about rhythm. You could also pinpoint dribble pickups as another one, which is one of the qualities we're working on here. This is mainly for more ball dominant guards who have the least to shoot off the dribble shots, but either way, it's good to work on the qualities of rotating in a shot and picking up the ball from a variety of dribbles. After this, we got drifts. In other words, carrying the momentum from the movement into the shot. One of the toughest parts about drifting is that your perception of the rim is changing during the shot. You start at one angle and release the ball at another. So this is something that you need a ton of reps with just to get the feel for. But if you can get good at this, it allows you to continue your momentum and gain separation from the defender. And especially going to your weak hand, it honestly feels more comfortable at times to let that momentum continue a bit. So we can start this closer with the hop into the drift where they're getting accustomed to just drifting and since it's closer they can get more reps as they get the hang of it they can exaggerate this more and if they're still struggling they can tone it down a bit i also really like this spin drill that we did at the end 
where they're alternating between getting on balance and landing before the pole, and one where they allow themselves to drift and land past the pole. This is ideal for me because they're getting used to stopping themselves from a high speed and stopping that crazy momentum, getting to that perfect balance, but then also getting used to drifting out of this, both of which will be needed in a game as a high level dynamic shooter. Second to last one I'll talk about here is shooting a bit on the way down. Being able to vary the release timing is a great tool, especially in the mid range, but also from three where sometimes you'll have more momentum and may need to hang a bit longer. Even if it's not this much of a hang, it's a good way to exaggerate it and get comfortable finding power on the ball without using the jump as the main source of power. And then lastly is being able to shoot with a super quick trigger. Again, if you're a taller player who gets shots off easier, maybe speed isn't as much of a priority. But for the 99% of the world who's under 6'4 or so, yeah, you're probably going to need to be able to shoot some super quick trigger shots where you don't catch, get set, and then shoot, but start the shooting process as the ball's on the way there, catch, and as soon as it hits your hands, you're right into it, like these guys are trying to work on here. Now, the big key to working on really all of these, in a game like we talked about, try to make every shot a set shot, right? perfect shot, at least at first. Like here, Duncan does a great job of using this leg like a kickstand to fully stop himself. So he jumps straight up and down and basically makes it a set shot. And in a workout, yes, work on this, but you also wanna prepare for some of the times like this where you do keep that momentum going. You wanna be okay with missing some because if you're not, you probably just try to slow down and give yourself the best chance to make it. A lot of times you, you guys will do a good job of like pushing the speed or on the other one, like jumping in that direction, but you'll kind of slow it down in the end for what reason? For control. For control because you don't want to miss, okay? For this workout, or at least the next couple of drills, don't care as much about making shots. That's why we're not counting points on these. I want you guys to just push the edges of how much you can move, the speed that you can shoot at, maybe shooting on the way down. If you airball a couple shots, that's fine. We're doing these because they're difficult and because I want to help you guys become like more dynamic shooters, okay? So for this one, don't care about the makes. We will at the end, but for now, just kind of let yourself go in terms of that speed. So ease yourself into this. Of course, if you can't even make three or four out of 10 set shots, try a bit of movement into your shots and training, but don't go too crazy with this. But once you're at five or six out of 10, or in game you're making a decent amount, start to progress up to these. As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to check out the Sharpshooter program, which will be in the description. Make sure that you guys can work on all of these qualities in a really structured manner. Stay tuned.